Princess Cruises has a long reputation as a premium cruise line. Now, we just spent a week aboard Discovery Princess in Alaska. Is the food and dining as premium as the reputation? Well, let's talk about it. Hello cruisers and welcome to another Cruise Report food and dining review. In this video, I'm going to give you our honest review of our dining experience on Discovery Princess. We spent seven days and nights on Discovery exploring as many dining venues as time and our stomachs would permit. Even though we were hosted by Princess Cruises on this sailing, Princess is not sponsoring this video and no money has exchanged hands. I'm going to tell you exactly what we liked about the food and what we didn't like. So let's get started. When watching reviews on YouTube, it might be helpful to know a little bit about the reviewer. When it comes to food, I am more adventuresome than Ricky is. I enjoy a variety of exotic cuisines, whereas her tastes are more simple. I love Indian and Thai food, for example, and the hotter and spicier the better. Now, by comparison, Ricky is happier with meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Neither of us are big on seafood, but we'll try it on occasion. We rarely eat breakfast, but we did eat breakfast almost every morning on this cruise, and I'll talk about that later. We see and review things from the perspective of an adult couple traveling without family or friends. We usually try to dine at a table for two as a couple, rarely joining a group, unless we're invited to do so. Our sailing on Discovery Princess was our 135th cruise in the past 20 years. So having dined on more than 100 different ships across 39 cruise lines, we have a pretty broad background on cruise ship dining. I always like to preface these food and dining reviews by stating that food reviews are extremely subjective. Everyone has different tastes, different likes and dislikes. So if there's something we don't like, you can bet there are plenty of other people out there who are going to say they loved it. Now, if you've sailed on Discovery Princess or any Princess cruise recently and you agree or disagree with our assessment, I would invite you to place your comments in the comment section below this video. And I want to thank everyone at Princess Cruises for allowing us the opportunity to experience Discovery Princess and make this video. Also, I want to encourage you to watch this video until the very end because I'm going to reveal the single best dish I ate during our week aboard Discovery Princess. I think you're going to be pretty surprised at my number one pick. World Fresh Marketplace is Discovery Princess's Lido Buffet. And this buffet has to be one of the largest at sea, or at least it feels like it when you walk through it. There's serving lines on both starboard and port sides of the ship, and some serving stations in between the port and starboard sides. World Fresh Marketplace is open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And most evenings they offer some sort of a themed Italian night, Greek night, etc. I always find it a bit confusing to navigate through the various serving stations here. At first, it appears that you get into line and everything will move in an orderly fashion in one direction, sort of like an old school cafeteria. But you soon find yourself coming into contact with other diners coming at you from the opposite direction. And before long, it's every man for himself. <laughs> While some serving stations are identical on both port and starboard, others are unique and only exist on port or starboard. For example, if you enjoy gyros or eros, there's only one station and it's on the port side forward. So you just kind of have to work your way up and down both sides of the buffet as well as the serving stations that run perpendicular to those serving lines to find everything on offer here. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the layout, the food served here was much better than what I remember from previous Princess Buffet experiences. If you follow our channel, you know that Ricky and I are not big fans of buffets as a rule. The food is usually kind of bland and under-seasoned, and the seating areas tend to get overcrowded. 
And while World Fresh Marketplace is far from what we consider fine dining, they offered a very good selection of above-average buffet cuisine. We ate here twice for lunch, and we enjoyed both meals. We were able to find good tables, and the waiters were on hand to take our drink order. Our most recent Princess Cruise was on Majestic Princess in 2021 and Island Princess in 2018, and the World Fresh Marketplace is one area where we definitely see an improvement. However, we wish Princess would go back to the COVID protocol of having crew members serve guests as opposed to self-service. We just don't like grabbing utensils that 500 other people have handled. I understand the reality of staffing and that it costs a lot of money to have crew members serve guests. So here is my suggestion as a compromise. Keep the self-serve process, but offer boxes of disposable plastic gloves that we can wear when we go through the buffet stations. If cruise lines offer these gloves, would you wear them? Let me know in the comments section below. I know we would. There are three main dining rooms on Discovery Princess. The Juno dining room is located on Deck 5 Midship. Skagway is on Deck 6 Midship. And Ketchikan is on Deck 6 Aft. We chose the Ketchikan dining room as our preferred venue. And Princess's Dine My Way program allows guests to decide when and where to dine. You can use the Medallion app to select a dining room and a time to dine. If you wish to dine at the same time each evening with the same wait staff, you can do that. Or you can select a different dining venue each evening. Now, we only dined in the MDR twice on this cruise. On embarkation day, we had lunch in the Skagway dining room. At least, I, th I think it was the Skagway, because only one of the main dining venues is open for lunch on embarkation day. We usually go to the buffet for embarkation lunch because on many ships, that's the only option. However, we much prefer the more relaxed experience of main dining on embarkation, so kudos to Princess for even offering it. Even though we only had dinner in main dining one evening toward the end of the cruise, we did check the menus every evening. We found the menus to be a little abbreviated with fewer choices than in the past. Also, the always available items did not include a steak or a beef dish. Only salmon or chicken were offered as main courses. Toward the end of the cruise, we dined in the Ketchikan dining room on gala night. We had chosen a dining time of 6.45 and were immediately seated at a table for two. We were pleased that there was ample space between our table and the table next to us. Our waiter greeted us, gave us menus, took our drink order, and soon after we arrived, there was a procession of waiters going through the dining room with baked Alaska, even though I'm pretty sure those were just props. Service throughout dinner was prompt, while we it seemed a little bit frantic. Ricky and I both ordered the shrimp cocktail from the always available menu, and they were honestly nothing special. The shrimp was a little mushy and watery, and there wasn't enough cocktail sauce. We wouldn't order it again. I also ordered the romaine and kale Caesar salad from the always available menu, and it was okay. Ricky had the iceberg wedge salad, and she enjoyed it, even though the blue cheese dressing tasted nothing like blue cheese. For my main, I ordered the beef wellington. I was kind of expecting to see a surf and turf on the gala menu, but instead you have a choice between lobster or beef. Ricky ordered the French onion soup from the always available menu as her main course. She didn't find any of the main courses that appealed to her. She really did like the soup, and my beef wellington was very tender, and I enjoyed it. I also asked for an order of the tortellini because I wanted to check out their pasta offerings and see if they were as good as I remembered, and the tortellini was very good. I should also mention that all of the bread was very good. In fact, all of the bread throughout the ship was very good. For dessert, we both ordered the Baked Alaska, and this was not your traditional cruise ship Baked Alaska. These were little individually prepared desserts with a very thin wafer of sponge cake on the bottom, topped with layers of vanilla, chocolate, and raspberry-flavored ice cream. I have eaten a lot of Baked Alaska in the past 20 years, and I've never seen raspberry-flavored ice cream used. I didn't even know they made raspberry-flavored ice cream. 
Overall, we felt like our main dining experience on Discovery Princess was just okay. I'd say it was pretty typical for main dining on most cruise lines. The International Cafe is Princess's 24-hour coffee shop and it's one of our personal favorite venues on a Princess cruise. I would go to International Cafe every morning about 5.30 a.m. for my coffee fix. They have a full barista operation here that can make any craft coffee drink you want. Now, I'm a simple drip coffee guy, and I found the brewed coffee to be excellent. They have a huge selection of pastries and grab-and-go breakfast items available here in the mornings. In the afternoon and evenings, the offerings change to sandwiches, snacks, and even some pastry pies that look really good. All of the food items at International Cafe are complimentary. Brewed coffee is $1.25 for 12 ounces or $1.75 for 16 ounces. The espresso drinks are competitively priced with other cruise ship coffee shops. Now, I tried the breakfast burrito with egg, ham, and cheese and the princess egg muffin, which has a slice of ham, a fried egg, and cheese. And when you order these items, a crew member will heat them up for you. And they were both very good. However, there's no salt or pepper available. And the burrito desperately needed salt. I asked two crew members for salt, and one crew member at the coffee station said to ask the crew member who was serving the food items for salt. When I asked that crew member, she said there was no salt available. Also, no napkins can be found. Princess, come on. I know you can put out a little tray somewhere with a salt and pepper shaker, a napkin dispenser, and maybe even some little cups of salsa for the burritos. The donuts and other sweet pastries we tried were all very good. I had the almond croissant one day and it was excellent. Salty Dog Grill and Slice Pizza are located on deck 16 just forward of the pool. I've always been a big fan of Slice Pizza, especially the large New York style slices of pepperoni served here. They do offer some other meat choices and veggie pizza choices here, but I can't seem to get past the pepperoni. Salty Dog Grill is their Lido burger and hot dog spot, and I'm not as big a fan of Salty Dog Grill. A good cheeseburger is just not that hard to do, but they haven't yet mastered it here. I tried the cheeseburger twice on this cruise and both times was underwhelmed as I have been in the past. The buns are good and the toppings are good. It's the meat that's the problem. It's just flavorless unseasoned and bland. I can't help but compare these burgers to what are offered at Guy's Burger Joint on Carnival, and these burgers don't even come close. The french fries, on the other hand, were very good when they were hot and fresh. Now, I did not try the brat with sauerkraut or the chicken sandwich. Now, if you've tried these, let me know in the comment section below how you liked them. Let me know what you think of their burgers. Slice and Salty Dog Grill are both complimentary. Another complimentary restaurant is Gigi's Pizzeria on Deck 7 Midship, located where Alfredo's Pizzeria was on Royal Princess. They offer a variety of made-to-order pizzas and a few pasta dishes here. Now, we did not dine at Gigi's on this cruise because, quite honestly, we've never been that impressed with the pizza at Alfredo's on other ships, and we figured they'd probably be the same at Gigi's. So I can't really give my honest opinion on Gigi since we didn't dine there. I remember on Royal Princess thinking that the pizza at Slice was better than Alfredo's. If you've dined at Gigi's on Discovery Princess, please let us know in the comments what your experience was like. Ocean Terrace Sushi is located on Deck 6 Midship overlooking the Piazza. This is a small space similar in design to Bellini's Bar on Deck 7. We didn't dine here on this sailing, but we did look over the menu. Sushi rolls were four pieces, about half the size of a typical sushi roll, and I believe they were $3.25. Sabatini's is Princess's iconic Italian specialty restaurant that you can find on every Princess ship, except for Majestic Princess. Now, we've dined at Sabatini's on every Princess cruise, and on this cruise, we had dinner here on the evening of embarkation. 
Embarkation Day, by the way, is a great time to enjoy specialty dining, since for some reason specialty restaurants are never very crowded. The cost to dine in Sabatini's is $25 per person. That's down from $29 we paid on our Island Princess sailing. Unless my memory is completely failing me, I would swear that Sabatini's used to have tablecloths on the table. And if they did, they are no more. The absence of tablecloths gives this restaurant a much more casual, uh, relaxed, laid-back feel. I would swear the menu has changed as well. The four-course meal begins with an appetizer of, oh boy, to Stuzicchio della Casa, or appetizer of the house. This was described as a warm, rustic, whole wheat loaf, Tuscan zonzel. We were served the zonzel and prosciutto. For my antipasti course, I ordered the fried calamari, which is something I never order. But I had such a great calamari experience on Celebrity Apex that I wanted to see how princesses would compare. I received a basket of breaded and fried calamari rings, which was honestly enough for two people to share. The calamari uh, was served hot, fresh, and the rings were tender. The lemon garlic aioli made a great dipping sauce. I almost ordered the grilled lamb skewers, and I think on my next visit, if the menu's the same, I'll try them. Ricky had a bowl of the Grana Padano cheese fondue soup, which looked great. And I assume it was, since she ate it all. Now, one thing you'll learn about Ricky, if you're new to our channel, if she doesn't like something, she simply won't eat it. For the pasta course, I ordered the beef pappardelle, and while the pasta was perfectly cooked, the ragu lacked seasoning. And this would become a recurring issue with many dishes we tried during our cruise. Ricky ordered the spaghetti pomodoro with meat sauce, which served as both her pasta course and her main course. Our waiter highly recommended the lemon and rosemary chicken scallopini, and this dish was perfectly prepared and nicely presented. The chicken was fork tender, but again, the dish lacked seasoning and came off as a bit bland. Now, for dessert, we split the four dessert tasting, which includes tiramisu, vanilla panna cotta, zabaglione, and some chef's specialty. And all four of the desserts were very good. Our final assessment was this is not the best meal we've had at Sabatini's in the past, but it was good enough that we would do it again and feel like the atmosphere, excellent service, and the food were well worth the $25 cover charge. It would appear that they've changed Sabatini's, lowered the price, and made it more of a casual dining as opposed to a formal Italian restaurant. If you're staying in a suite on Discovery Princess, you will be invited to enjoy breakfast each morning at Sabatini's. Now, we were invited by Princess to give this a try so that we could spread the word. And we found this to be a great extra perk for those sweet guests to avoid the sometimes crowded main dining room or World Fresh Marketplace buffet. Now, we enjoyed the sweet breakfast on a few mornings and never saw more than six tables occupied. The sweet breakfast starts with a complimentary mimosa. A variety of pastries are available, and we found all of the pastries on Discovery Princess to be very good. Egg dishes are made to order. Our favorite was Eggs Benedict. I also got kind of hooked on this Belt Sandwich, B-E-L-T, which stands for Bacon, Egg, Lettuce, and Tomato. And the Belgian waffle with maple syrup and whipped cream was also excellent. Now, another breakfast option is the ultimate balcony breakfast, and we tried this one morning in our stateroom. Now, this optional room service offering is $45 for two people, which is a fixed menu. The meal includes a half a bottle of champagne, coffee, tea, and orange juice. There are two plates of cold smoked salmon on a toasted lemon brioche. Ricky and I don't eat smoked salmon, so we skipped that course. However, if you do like salmon, it looked amazing. There are two plates with small quiche Lorraine, which were very good. Another plate had an assortment of fresh fruit to share. I mean, it was a lot of food. There were also some pastries. 
There's one small caveat to keep in mind. If you're in a standard balcony stateroom like ours with no chairs, sofa, or coffee table, then enjoying the ultimate balcony breakfast can be a challenge. All six plates of foods with their covers were stacked onto the small round table that we brought inside from the balcony. And you may be wondering why we did not enjoy our ultimate balcony breakfast on our balcony. Well, on this day, it was 45 degrees outside. Plus, the balcony is really a little too small to enjoy such a feast. I sat in the desk chair on one side of that small table stacked with the dishes, and Ricky sat on the edge of the bed. As we completed one course, we would remove the plate with its cover and place it on the floor next to us. The food was all very good, but to enjoy it in this stateroom is cumbersome. If you love smoked salmon and you're in a stateroom with a coffee table and some seating, give the ultimate balcony breakfast a try. I can highly recommend it under those circumstances. Now, we did not dine at Bistro Sur La Mer on this sailing, but we did last year on Majestic Princess. And this is kind of a French bistro located on Deck 7 Midship. I'd consider it to be very seafood forward, but they have other offerings. They have something for everyone. It's a beautiful restaurant, perhaps the classiest restaurant on Discovery. If you love seafood or if you love the atmosphere of a French bistro, this should be at the top of your specialty dining bucket list. With so many specialty dining choices and only seven nights on Discovery Princess, we kind of had to pick and choose which venues to cover, and we wanted to try some that we had never tried before. There is a $29 cover charge to dine at Bistro Sur La Mer. Now, Crown Grill is Princess's upscale specialty steakhouse. The cost to dine here is $29 per person, and we've always had good experiences at Crown Grill in the past. In fact, we celebrated an anniversary at Crown Grill on Royal Princess a few years back. Our experience at Crown Grill on Discovery Princess did not disappoint. We were seated at a nice, quiet table for two, and our waitress was super friendly, even offered to take our picture using my iPhone. The meal started with a bread course consisting of a garlic butter-infused, tear-apart, crusty roll filled with melted mozzarella cheese. I could have eaten two of those. For my starter, I ordered the seared jumbo sea scallop and asked the waitress if they would just leave off the caviar, which I don't like, and she happily agreed to do that. There were two large scallops, and I devoured one before I remembered I needed to take a picture. Ricky had the hand-cut beef filet tartare, and she ate every bite, so you know what that means. For our next course, I ordered the shrimp and pancetta bisque with chickpea croutons, and Ricky ordered the black and blue onion soup. Both of the soups were exceptional. Every time I visit Crown Grill, I seem to gravitate back to that 16-ounce bone-in ribeye steak, which they now call a premium beef chop, and Ricky ordered the 8-ounce filet mignon. My steak was cooked perfectly medium as ordered and came with sautéed mushrooms piled on top. Honestly, I would have preferred that the mushrooms be on the side. They were good, I just didn't want them covering up the main event. Now, Ricky's filet was a little undercooked. She ordered medium, but it was served more like medium rare. But it was not so rare that she needed to send it back. Both steaks were tender and flavorful. Now, for dessert, we shared an order of the salted caramel creme brulee cheesecake, which was decadent and delicious. Our final assessment of Crown Grill is that it remains one of the better specialty restaurants on any cruise ship. We've never had anything other than a great experience at a Crown Grill, and every guest should dine here at least once per cruise. The Salty Dog Gastro Pub is located on Deck 5 Midship, right across the piazza from International Cafe. And this is another specialty dining venue open for dinner each evening. I apologize for doing such a terrible job as a journalist, but I failed to see if it was open for lunch. 
But we did have dinner here one evening, and unlike Sabatini's Crown Grill and Bistro Sur La Mer, reservations are not required to dine here. The cover charge is $18 per person, and the menu here is pretty limited compared to some of the other specialty restaurants. However, this is a gastropub, and as such, it has a very casual atmosphere. There are four booths along the wall with views of the ocean, and we love booth seating, so we grabbed one in the corner. Now, rather than multiple courses like starter, soup, salad, main course, the menu is designed as a selection of what they refer to as gourmet plates. The cover charge includes your choice of any two gourmet plates and a dessert. Now, Ricky ordered the Emmental and Gruyere grilled cheese and the wild mushroom saute. The grilled cheese was sort of a deconstructed grilled cheese sandwich with a bowl of melted cheese served with toast for dipping. She commented that the cheese dip was delicious, but very rich. The mushroom saute is a vegetarian dish that had porcini mushrooms topped with a poached egg that has somehow been breaded and deep fried, and she enjoyed both of her dishes. I ordered the spicy stout beef short ribs and the SDG burger, which is their signature burger. The short ribs were braised to a fall apart tender consistency and topped with an orange honey glaze. The SDG burger patty is made from ground ribeye, beef short rib, and pork belly. So, I mean, how can you go wrong with that combination? The burger is topped with a beer battered jalapeno and charred onion aioli on a brioche bun. The burger is served with an order of delicious truffle parmesan fries or sweet potato fries. I had the truffle parmesan, and they were excellent. For dessert, we shared an order of bourbon chocolate pot de creme, which is topped with salted caramel popcorn. It's kind of like a chocolate mousse with a quinella vanilla ice cream and then covered with these salted caramel popcorn bits. And there was none left in the bowl when we finished. Salty Dog Gastro Pub was the biggest dining surprise of the cruise for us. I think it was my favorite meal of the cruise. Casual, relaxed atmosphere with a menu of simple pub-type food expertly prepared. Everything was delicious and the service was great. As it was in every dining venue on Discovery Princess, service was amazing. We were a little surprised that there was only one other table of diners here during our visit, and I think they might have just been having beer. I do have a couple of suggestions I think Princess may wish to consider. I'd replace that cover charge with an a la carte menu. I think a lot of people may not be super hungry, and they'd be willing to pay $10 or $12 for that SDG burger and fries. I certainly would. I would also pay $8 to $10 for the beef short rib dish. Also, being a gastropub, I think it should have a really good order of fish and chips on the menu. But the bottom line is, Salty Dog Gastropub is one of our new favorite specialty dining venues, and we will definitely go back. Whenever we have the opportunity to dine at a chef's table, we jump on it. On this sailing, we were fortunate to be two of the 12 people selected to enjoy a chef's table meal one evening. The chef's table is a multi-course extravaganza for $115 per person that includes champagne and wine. This is the most elaborate dining experience on a Princess Cruise. Now, diners are asked to gather in the Crown Grill Bar at 6.30 p.m., and then we're greeted by the maitre d' and escorted to one of the main dining rooms and seated at a large round table inside a special area reserved for Chef's Table Lumiere. I'm not going to go through every course that was served at the Chef's Table, but I will say that we noticed some changes from the Chef's Table that we enjoyed in 2018 on Island Princess. Gone is the galley tour portion, where we were served gourmet appetizers and champagne in the galley. We can probably thank COVID for that. Instead, all of the courses were served at the table in the restaurant. The executive chef and the maitre d' would come to the table to introduce each course and give a description of the dishes being served. Unfortunately for us, <laughs> just for us, the meal started off with our least favorite dish on planet Earth, a raw oyster on the half shell. I've only eaten one in my life about 30 years ago, and I swore I'd never eat another one. After scraping off the caviar on top, I gave it the old college try and downed the slimy mollusk. 
I know many of you consider these to be a delicacy, and I'm sure if you fall into that group, you would have loved this. In fact, Ricky and I are the only two people at the table this evening to cringe at the sight of raw oysters. Everyone else love them. Sorry, I just don't get the appeal. Every course to follow fell within our culinary comfort zone, and each dish was a work of art. The preparation and presentation of each course was really something very special. And at the end of the meal, we were each presented with beautiful bound copies of the evening's menu, and each lady at the table received a red rose. If you consider yourself a foodie and really enjoy upscale dining, you should definitely try to get a reservation for the chef's table on Princess. I don't think you can find a comparable dining experience on land at anywhere close to this price. So I can't do a proper dining review without talking about ice cream. And on Discovery Princess, you have a couple of choices available to you. Swirls is the ship's soft-serve ice cream shop on Deck 16 Midship, the Lido Deck. The soft-serve cups and cones served here are complimentary. They offer vanilla, chocolate, or a swirl of the two flavors. Gelato is the gelato shop located on Deck 5 Midship at the Piazza. Here you can get a bowl or a waffle cone of fresh-made onboard gelato or Italian ice cream. You're going to pay $1.25 per scoop for the gelato served here, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. They have a wide selection of flavors, my favorites being Dulce de Leche and Nutella. They also offer some fruit-flavored sorbets, and Princess was recently recognized by the Italian Chamber of Commerce, certifying that Princess's gelato experience is the first to offer authentic gelato outside of Italy. That's pretty high praise, but not as high as my personal opinion that this is damn good gelato. And I've had my share throughout Italy and elsewhere. Just to show you how people have different tastes, Ricky preferred swirls to gelato, while I prefer gelato. I told you she has simple tastes. So what about my overall number one dish that I enjoyed on Discovery Princess? If I could only choose one dish to consume again, which one would I pick? Well, it would be, without question, the spicy stout beef short ribs served at Salty Dog Gastropub. They were tender, meaty, and succulent, one of the best short rib preparations I've ever had. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out my other Discovery Princess videos. I'll have links in the description of this video and up above. And if you've sailed on Discovery Princess, please put your dining experiences in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button because it really does help our YouTube rankings. As always, we wish you smooth sailing.